A very good evening uh, to all our viewers and uh, welcome to Monday's edition of the Evening Review. Uh, my name is Tewan Jabela, your host. Uh, let's uh, go on a quick break before we return for our interview. Tonight on the show, I am joined by my colleague, Matthias Haufiku, who is uh, the news editor of Namibian Sun. And uh, we are discussing, of course, the farm gate issue, as many have uh, started calling it, that is uh, regarding the theft of apparently millions of dollars from the farm of uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa of South Africa. Uh, the Namibian State House has issued a statement on Friday last week in which uh, they also had a shot at the media, both locally and the South African media, saying that uh, we are being malicious by reporting that uh, President Hage Genkop apparently was asked by President Ramaphosa to sort of cover up or help him actually trace the suspected robbers. Uh, Matthias, uh, thank you for joining me, man. Yeah, no, it's, good to, it's good to be here. Yeah. Sitting on this side. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, you tweeted... Uh, two days ago saying that, uh, of course, you were reacting to uh, the to Mr. Hengari, Dr. Hengari's um, press, press release. You said the presidency and its self-incriminating statements. Sometimes it's better to just keep quiet, really. The police n clearly knew about Farmgate when they arrested the suspect. It was no immigration-related uh, uh, of course, you are referring to the arrest of uh, uh, David Emmanuel David. Maybe if you can expand on that. Yeah. Well, I, I, um, from the onset, um, I think since this, when the story broke on, on the, I believe it was on the first of June, when mm. Mr. Fraser laid the complaint. Um, one ordinarily would have uh, expected, especially when his statement uh, leaked to the media in the to the public domain. Mm would have expected the presidency to, to right away issue their statement. Yeah. They issued their statement om almost two weeks later. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know what they were waiting for. They were probably waiting for things to probably disappear or simmer down, or I don't know, perhaps it was a strategy. Yeah. Um, but but uh, I'd, I'd, I, I would like to say, I think from a PR point of view, it was, it was a bad move mm, at that mm. hour and the manner in which it, which it was written. Mm. Um, because uh, instead of uh, now coming out gun blazing and uh, accusing the media and blasting, of course that's how politicians are, that's what they always do, the media is always the scapegoat. Mm. One would have expected a detailed explanation as to really what transpired. Mm. You need to take the nation into confidence mm. if you are really as, uh, as innocent as you say, uh, as you claim to be. Mm. So one would really have uh, uh, expected that instead of, of, of gunning for the media. Mm. So, it, yeah, it was a bit surprising, also the timing of on a Friday afternoon, I think it was around 2.30. <laughs> <2 30. laughs> yeah. From a PR <laughs> point of view, there's a lot of technicalities that you, can, that you can look at as to how things could have been done differently to, mm -hmm. to really tell the real story of, of, of our presidency. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the things that you said uh, here, uh, and I, I wrote quite extensively in in tomorrow's paper about, uh, uh, yeah, I wrote a story really looking into um, into this issue and I'm also questioning these things because in the case of this guy who was arrested, the man was arrested, the operation was led by high level police officers. Okay. Commissioner uh, uh, Shikongo was there, Ahas, uh, com Deputy Commissioner Ahas was involved um, and then, I mean, if it's really just immigration, how do you involve that high-level uh, chiefs of, 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 of the police to really to lead a chase and hunt a guy who crossed with a canoe yeah. the river? 
Yeah, no, like I said earlier on, I think it, it, it was an opportunity lost that the presidency couldn't take the nation into confidence yeah. as to what really transpired in June 2020. Yeah. Because there's no way, there's a paragraph in which Dr. Angari claims that it was Im immigration related offenses, mm. but it could never have been. Mm. There's really no way. Um, I mean, uh, the, the, the report of Mr. Becker that also recently surfaced in the public domain clearly states mm -hmm. that the police knew why this guy was uh, running to Namibia mm -hmm. and why it was important to, to, to nab him and also keep it discreet. Yeah. So clearly the immigration aspect was just a cover-up because there's nothing else they, they could have used um, without exposing as to why they really need to capture him. But that is also why I find it uh, strange that... Um that Dr. Hengari would say that uh, it was an immigration issue, why on earth would President Cyril Ramaphosa contact Namibian authorities? Uh, of course, they are denying that there was such contact, but why would the president uh, contact his Namibian counterpart just for that? Who, who is this guy? If in the, in the greater scheme of things, if, it was, if you remove the Palapala, yeah. Scandal. I mean, what, 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 what would he be to warrant that uh, that kind of head of <laughs> head of state conversations to to take place? But I mean, d do you then think, Matthias, that uh, this an element? What is your conviction? What, what do you think transpired? Yeah, um, from the onset, um, th th there's there's a lot of truth in uh, Mr. Fraser's statement. Yeah, and I believe. There's a lot of political motives in the statement also. Yes. But you would see that cases of that nature hardly surfaces unless the top dogs are fighting, mm. which is good for the public. This is the only time we get to learn of some of these things that happens beyond closed doors. Mm. So, and it's a political year in South Africa, it's an election year. Mm -hmm. So, whether Mr. Fraser has political motives for him to go and now reveal this information, and not back then. That's immaterial mm. if what he alleged is, is truthful. Mm. So that is what we should be focusing. Because everything in the political space always has a political connotation to it. Mm. Mm. So I, I think it's the fact that we should be now questioning. Um, can they be verified or not? Mm. Mm. That should be the question that we're asking. Not whether it's political or not. And that's, that's where I see that's where the argument is, is, is being taken these days. Mm. Um, so, like I indicated earlier on, there's, there's a lot of, of covert and concealed information that the public hardly gets to see. Yeah. To also just open their eyes as to what really happens in the background as far as running a country is concerned. Mm. The people who we put into power to run the country, mm. what type of people are those? Mm. So, these are really some of the things, this is how, they, how it normally plays out. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you think, um, did you find it... Um, suspicious that the the Namibian police, because we in the media have, have, have tried to speak to the likes of General Deitunga. Uh, General Deitunga spoke to you, as a matter of fact, last week. He said, uh, basically, leave him out, leave me out of South African yeah. things. And I saw Commissioner Shikongo also quoted in a story of Tileni Mongudi of the Namibian, uh, in which uh, he gave a similar uh, answer, like, don't drag me into South African things. Why can't the police who actually executed this arrest come out clean and tell us if there's, if there's nothing to hide at all? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think uh, what corroborates that further is, is also the, the report of Mr. Becker. Mm -hmm. so, so clearly, as the head of CID at the time, he must have uh, submitted this report somewhere. Mm -hmm. Clearly, his superiors. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure they must have known about this. And also, um, the whole plan, it seems, was to keep this thing discreet. Yeah. So I'm not surprised why they don't want to discuss it. Yeah. Um, you also have uh, within the force itself, we understand there were a lot of, a couple of police officers who were moved around were seen as problematic as to, but this case, why are we not dealing with it in this manner? Why in such a lax manner? Mm. So there's a lot of things that happened within the force itself also yeah. that really plays and, and uh, sort of uh, gives credence to some of these uh, rumors that we are hearing. Mm, mm, mm. Indeed, we go for a quick uh, break and return for second half. Your kiss is set as a summer breeze, and you lift me up when the 
Welcome back. Uh, now, Matthias, you, you were getting into something that I wanted to discuss with you, and that is the issue of the sort of the reshuffle, if you if you may, mm -hmm. of top uh, officials within the police. Nelius Becker, the author of that document that is now the most detailed of, of piece of information that we've seen in, in this whole scandal, was moved. Um, so his report is dated 12... Uh, 20, I think, uh, okay, anyways, I don't remember the exact date, but it was in, in June uh, 2020. And then on the 15th of July, three weeks later, he was um, shifted from head of investigations, crime, investiga crime investigations, and shifted to, uh, uh, to forensics. Do you think that was just a pure coincidence? Because one of the things that he said in the letter, in that letter, is that they were waiting for FIC, the, the f uh, Financial Intelligence Center, to give them further information. Then they can go ahead with actual investigations of money laundering. That is in black and, and white in his speech, uh, in his report. Three weeks later, he's moved. Yeah. Do you think it's a coincidence? I, I wouldn't think so. Of course, we won't. We we, we won't have the the the, <laughs> the evidence, mm. the hardcore evidence to corroborate it. But it it couldn't have been a coincidence. If you just look at all the events and how events played out, I mean, it's not just the uh, beggar who was moved. There's a couple of investigators also who were part of the case who, who were moved. Some of them from head office into the regions into into other departments. Mm. So I, I don't think it it was a coincidence. Um, Surely I could, I could imagine how heated uh, it was as, and the pressure was probably intense mm -hmm. on the top brass of the police to ensure that this matter doesn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And so they also had to act. Um, so, so for me, I don't think it wasn't a, a coincidence at all. It couldn't have been. There's no way. Mm. Do you then think, Matthias, that, uh, <laughs> that there was actually, or this, is, this represents a blatant scenario of the abuse of both state institutions and resources. Because if a South African president is calling a Namibian president, as we hear, and then the Namibian president, I, I suppose, then tells those below him to do what, what, what we see in the, in the Becker report, and there are serious uh, charges that are not, that eventually never came to see the light of day, mm -hmm. Doesn't that uh, amount to abuse of state resources and institutions? Yeah, no, most definitely it does. Um, I mean, they have access, uh, the access to do it and the control, they have it. Um, so it's, it's a worrisome factor. Um, and, I, and, and you must remember that there's a lot of similarities between the president of uh, Agi Kengo and the president of Cyril Ramaphosa. Mm -hmm. You would see that um, ever since they ascended to those offices, they, have, they, 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 are, they seem to be building um, superstructures within the presidency yeah. where key institutions are housed there. Yeah. Um, recently, I think it was 2020, yeah, last year, um, the intelligence of South Africa, well, it, it's they, they, they are now embedded within the presidency. Yeah. We have in our case the investment here in Namibia, yeah. the investment body, you have the advisors who are uh, de facto ministers right now. It's the same within in South Africa also. Mm. The project management, it's the same. The delivery unit and things that you see emerging here in Namibia with green hydrogen, everything being done in the presidency mm. instead of cabinet. They are running the same sort of offices. So I don't know if it's a coincidence mm. that they are comfortable to speak about such things. I mean, if I was Hagi I would have told my nation that, look, um, I've gotten this call from my counterpart in South Africa to assist him in this manner. But I told him, uh, perhaps you should lay a police case and we take it from there. Mm. Extradition and all those things. That's how it should have happened, mm. ideally. Because, uh, I mean, both of them, when they also uh, 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 ascended to the presidency, 
with, uh, with the mantras of accountability and transparency. So where mm. is that? And respect for institutions and systems. Mm. So mm. we don't see that here. Yeah. yeah. No, but, but for me, I, I, that, is, that is exactly why I'm so scared because I, 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 I don't think Namibians have uh, absorbed the, the depth of this scandal. I mean, you know, because it is a, it's an international sort of scandal with so much noise coming from South Africa, I think we are a bit swayed to just uh, focus on, on South Africa, but I think it's very, very scandalous mm -hmm. because the South African police did not raise a finger in this matter. Yes. Never arrested anyone, never laid charges uh, against anyone until the, the Fraser's uh, affidavit now. It's Namibian police that seem, seemingly did all the dirty work, and, and I find that very, very scandalous. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, I mean, wh where does that uh, leave the president in terms of, because he wants to be perceived as this transparent man, as this man who has brought so much credibility to the, to the, to the, to the uh, office of the president. But this rolls back any small progresses that he might have made in the, in the past couple of years? Yeah, most definitely it has an impact on, on the work he's done. Um, and also you, you must remember that uh, the police, there's already a public perception that, that the police only acts when it comes to defending the interests of those who are classified to be elite citizens. Mm -hmm. And when you have cases like this, it's really hard not to believe those type of perceptions. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, and the other thing is also, how do you then bridge the, the widening gap between the community and the police? Mm. That's why uh, nowadays, even if you go on social media, the, the community, do, they don't have anything positive to say about the police. Mm. And, and it's all because of this type of things, because they feel they're not part of the system. They're not part of the very institutions that, are ought, that ought to, to fight for their well-being as, as, uh, as citizens of the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this, um um, I think also in 2020 or 2021, round about there, there was a this a police officer who was fired. I don't know, I don't know if you remember the case of uh, a police officer Gerard Shimwethereni or something. He was fired because he spoke on Eagle FM, in which he criticized the police, and he was making exactly that point to say that the police prioritize cases of these high-level people or people that they know. And uh, the same courtesy is not extended to the common men. And uh, they tunga, uh, Sebastian they tunga, chief, uh, chief Inspector fired him. Um, Norman Chobe took up the case. I can't remember how it concluded, but uh, or maybe still in the courts. But it speaks exactly to that. And uh, just and then we had, of course, the case of uh, uh, the ruling party when they held the, their 60th birthday in the at the height of COVID-19. And um, some people, some other people got arrested, they got fined. We have people from, uh, was it those guys from AR, the five people that uh, were fined, they were found guilty actually in a court and, and, and they were fined. And the SWAPO violation never really took off. How dangerous is it that uh, if police start having two sets of rules on how they apply uh, depending on who, who the, the violator is. Yeah, it, it, it really also speaks to, to, to the level of, uh, of, of to the high level of crimes in the country uh, because number one, the community doesn't trust the police and um, they don't even trust it enough to, to call and say, no, Toivo, my neighbor is selling drugs. Mm. Yeah, because within the force, there are also mm. those who are embedded there who are dealing with, with this uh, with these drug dealers out here, mm -hmm. and 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 it, it's really dangerous because uh, one key aspect of policing is the community aspect. Yeah. You really need the community behind you mm -hmm. to effecti effectively do your work. Um, but but I don't know if it's if it's seen in that matter. And of course, the issue of the eagle from the policeman was fired. Um, you uh, ordinarily you want people to speak out, mm -hmm. but there are also certain professions like the police where where there are layers to communicate uh, certain matters. Mm. Um, so I think on that basis, they, they, they probably uh, used that to get, to get rid of him. Mm. It's, like, it's more like the Fraser matter. I mean, as an ex-intelligence boss, mm. he's, he's privy to very sensitive information. Mm. 
And ordinarily, I would say probably that's how he probably got hold of uh, most of these Palavala details. Mm -hmm. uh, but then it also speaks to our system, and not just in South Africa. I think generally all over the continent. Mm -hmm. um, we have politicized so many of our institutions. Even sensitive institutions of the intelligence have been, have mm -hmm. been politicized. Mm -hmm. And they are now being used for this type of battles. Mm -hmm. uh, institutions that should be focusing on safeguarding national security are now used for political battles. So, so uh, there's really a lot of introspection that we, we should do as a continent. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, I think we, 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 there's, there's danger looming for us ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, another thing is obviously, like I was saying at the beginning, you know, uh, Commissioner Shikongo was involved in that operation of arresting uh, Emmanuel David and um, uh, not long after that, he became, he was promoted to a major general and is now one of the deputies to Ndeitunga himself. Uh, and I, I know Commissioner Shikongo as a, as a brilliant uh, police officer, so I can't take away the merits of his promotion. But once you were used in something as, as dubious as that, even your meritious uh, merit merit-based sort of growth within their rank becomes uh, shrouded in, 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 in this kind of narratives that maybe it was a reward from, uh, from your bosses. Yeah, no, definitely. I'm sure he's also aware of, of those talks. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's public talks. And the, the, don't forget that uh, uh, <laughs> the IG is going home in August mm -hmm. and Commissioner Shikongo is one of those tip to, to take over. Mm -hmm. So it's really, we, 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 in our institutions, it's, it's really important that that we, by all means, ensure that uh, things are done in the correct manner. Mm -hmm. Well, if you have a superior, voice, speak out against the superior. Yeah. And uh, tell him or her why you think this specific route is detrimental to the institution. Yeah, yeah. Because institutions should supersede individualism. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, the name of the Namibian police is tainted. Yeah. Just yeah. because of of this situation mm -hmm. uh, and the South African police service is not featuring anywhere mm -hmm. uh, because where the case emanated from it, it, it seems the, vi the victim who lost money didn't want this case to go out yeah. so it, it really speaks volumes it speaks volumes that uh, if, if someone is not acting or reporting matters to, the, to his own authorities, but they want you in another country mm. for your authorities to take it up. Mm. It doesn't add up. Yeah, yeah, they want you to do their, <laughs> their, their, their dirty work. Yeah. yeah. But that is exactly why I think that uh, for, for Commissioner, for Major General now, Shikongo, um, of course I saw in the papers last week saying, him saying that uh, he's not, he doesn't have ambitions to succeed in the Tunga. Uh, and it's things that we hear all the time, but people eventually end up in those positions. Mm -hmm. And if eventually ends up, because I think he's probably the, the most uh, likely replacement for, for the uh, Fundi Tunga, and um, if he ascends to that office against the background of having conspired in this several uh, scandal, I think it's, he's really starting on a bad note. But uh, that is just my view. Thank you, Matthias, for joining me. Yeah, no, thanks to you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that was uh, tonight's show. Thank you for watching.